Welcome back you guys. My name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi over on Instagram. Thank you so much for coming back to my YouTube channel and clicking on today's video. This is part two of a five part series helping you get started on the carnivore diet if that is something that you want to do. And in today's video, I'm going to give you a list of lab tests and other tests you may want to consider before starting a carnivore diet, really before starting any diet or making any dietary change. I think it's important to really know where you stand with a lot of these numbers. So before I jump into that, I try to disclaim this at the beginning of every video. I am not a doctor, nutritionist, or expert. However, I will link below this video a couple of people in this field that are very experienced in working with people with compromised metabolic health and other health issues that I, I trust immensely that I've worked with personally myself. So just pull down the information section of this video if you are looking for someone to give you a little bit more in-depth help. So, so I do, again, think it's important that you get these lab tests run before you start the carnivore diet or any sort of diet because what I end up seeing a lot in the community is that people, they will get lab tests run six months or a year in but they didn't have a baseline. So they don't know if they had these issues going in and then you know you don't know if, if what you did with your diet caused it. Was it the chicken, was it the egg? Hard to know. So these are lab tests that I think you should continue to get at least every six months while you're doing the carnivore diet just to take a look and make sure that you don't need to adjust something. So the first one that I recommend across the board men and women get is your A1C. Your A1C is essentially gonna tell you if you're insulin resistant, well not necessarily insulin resistant, but pre-diabetic, which is, if you're pre-diabetic, more than likely you're insulin resistant. So knowing your A1C, 5.7 I believe is where we start getting into that pre-diabetic range. So what you want with your carnivore diet is for that A1C to come down. And I know tons and tons of people who have seen their A1C go down into the fours, some even lower, but you know, 5.7 above pre-diabetic and then getting up in that diabetic range. And what we wanna do with this way of eating is help you to bring that down. Now, some people, if they have that insulin resistance, history of metabolic issues, they may need to start the carnivore diet with a higher fat ratio than a typical person who maybe has a A1C of like 5.0. So it's again, important for you to know these numbers going in to know how to proceed with your carnivore diet. Okay? Now, men and women both, I believe that you should get your hormones checked. Men, testosterone is gonna be the big one for you because there are some men and women too that do the carnivore diet and they try to do a lot of fasting and they try to do like one meal a day and while for some people that's really great, it can tank the testosterone. And if you, you know, a lot of you guys know, if you have low testosterone, you're just not <laughs> really feeling great. The hormones are very, very important for the entire body's function. So check in that on that testosterone. Women, you can check your testosterone as well, but I also love for women to check in on their progesterone. And when you check your progesterone, you wanna check it typically around day 21 of your cycle or seven days after you ovulate. So low progesterone can also be an issue for people. And women, your testosterone can be high if you have a certain type of PCOS. So I'm not gonna get super in depth with PCOS here, but I had PCOS when starting the carnivore diet and really didn't know that I had PCOS because it wasn't obvious to me except for the fact that I was just having all kinds of other inflammation issues in my body and I was insulin resistant. So, you know, you can also have low testosterone, have PCOS. So it's a, it's a complicated subject, but knowing where your hormones are at is very, very important. And again, if you have low progesterone, you may want to consider doing a higher fat carnivore diet to help you get those levels back up. And that's not the only thing that you'll do to get those levels back up. I did an interview with Dr. Elizabeth Bright that I will link below this video where we really talk a bit more in depth about hormones and thyroid, which I'm gonna talk about next. <laughs> so. A lot of people do blame low carb diets and say that, that they will decimate your thyroid and cause you thyroid issues. So, and I don't agree with that. Again, you can watch my video with Dr. Elizabeth Bright. A lot of times what causes 
thyroid hormone to go down and thyroid issues is going to be calorie restriction and not eating enough fat and too much fasting. A lot of those things, which I'll cover this week in my videos, could come into play with your thyroid. So having and mineral deficiencies as well, which I'll get into in this video. Um, so having a full thyroid panel, and again, I'll link below this video, the thyroid test that I use with Let's Get Checked. Um, so that's just something you wanna look at. Your T3, T4, reverse T3, reverse T4, not just your TSH. Too many people just check that TSH, that's not gonna be enough. And if you're still having symptoms of low thyroid, then you're gonna to wanna to go even deeper than the thyroid panel that I'm gonna link below. So that's another one you definitely wanna take a look at. Okay guys, so this is just basic, basic, basic to get you started. Again, you may wanna to go to your doctor and get a full metabolic panel run. You may wanna check in with your kidneys, get your kidney function checked. Just all of that stuff going into the carnivore diet before you really get started. The next thing that you are going to want to pay attention to is your mineral status. And this is something that I didn't really pay attention to until after I had gotten into the carnivore diet a little over a year and started having issues with my electrolytes. Now I'm gonna do a whole video on supplements and electrolytes tomorrow, so make sure you're subscribed so you can get that video when it comes out. But I'm now recommending people, if they can, to get a hair mineral test. Now my dear friend Nutrition with Judy, who is someone I've personally worked with, will do this hair mineral test for you and then she'll give you an analysis. She'll tell you what to do for your electrolytes because it's gonna be different with every single person. So knowing your mineral status, because if you are mineral deficient going into the carnivore diet, there may be some considerations that you need to make as to how you approach the diet 100% and you may need some extra help and you know to do something different with your electrolytes than the standard person going in. So blood test, your hormones, your thyroid, your A1C, and then check in that mineral test. You may wanna see what your mineral status is. If you're low on sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, just to see where you're at with those. Um, that could also be a reason if you're losing hair that you your minerals are completely depleted. So not a complete list, but hopefully enough to get you guys started on the carnivore diet. I hope this was very helpful, guys. Please feel free to leave me a comment below, a question below if you have any, and make sure you're subscribed so you can get the next three videos in this series to help you get started on the carnivore diet. Again, if that is something that you wanna do. Thanks again for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.